What is it that we have to confess? What is it that we have to say we have wronged the people? Because the basis of the leadership or the mandate of, 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 of leading this country comes from the people. And all what has happened in the recent times, in the recent months, is a situation where people have demonstrated, demonstrating against the price of fuel, demonstrating against what they call a hardship or economic hardship. But now that is that has not been a problem of the government. Government is insisting that we have launched a transitional stabilization program that also uh, is uh, associated with austerity measures. So austerity measures will actually lead to some kind of suffering. There is not going to be incentives for farmers, there's not going to be high salaries for civil servants, there's not going to be huge perks for ministers. So that obviously will bring some suffering to the people and people are obviously are bound to react. But I'm, I'm talking about the victim of violence, I'm talking about the rape doing, done by the army. Is the government going to be open on that? Because unless you talk the truth, you can't turn the page. I mean, this is a principle of reconciliation. Definitely the president has said those issues are being investigated and perpetrators will be brought to book and justice, the law will take its course on anyone who has violated the rights of other citizens. That is being investigated and of course punishment will, be, will come to the perpetrators of violence, perpetrators of rape, perpetrators of uh, looting and all those uh, crimes. That has been said and we cannot continue to reiterate what has already been said by the government. Honorable Minister, mm -hmm. the President Jamisa, I mean, uh, MDC President Jamisa has talked about the venue the, neutral, the neutrality of the venue for this dialogue to happen. And yesterday, it didn't appear at the State House. How would you uh, uh, comment on this? That is an, uh, an act of bad faith. Yesterday, the mm -hmm. president called all political parties, all leaders of political parties, to come to set the framework for the dialogue, to ensure that we mm -hmm. brainstorm on how dialogue should be uh, handled with regards to the contentious issues of reviving the economy and ensuring that there is reconciliation, there is peace in the country. Now, if we've got some political parties that think that they are bigger than other political parties, if we've got some citizens that think that they are more important than other citizens, it, it's a problem from the start. The president has humbled himself. He has said he is ready to listen to every Zimbabwean who matters, who is interested in ensuring that Zimbabwe is back on the economic uh, growth trajectory. So this is something that is being uh, 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 created by the opposition, and uh, we, we are very much uh, disappointed that the opposition, some of the opposition leaders are still doubting the legitimacy of the president at this present time. Yeah, this is an issue that just was up, by Just a follow-up, just a follow-up, Minister, just a follow-up. Yeah. Hey, what do you take from what he presented? What, 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 do you, what, what, what do you take? What do you accept? What Shamisa has presented at this meeting is what we can call a, a meaningless uh, uh, government, meaningless statements that are not authenticated by law, that are not authenticated by facts. You cannot say the president of the republic is just the president of his own party, yet all the churches have called this gathering to ensure that we, we discuss from a common position of understanding. We have to understand, we have to agree in the first place that there were elections and that there was a winner for those elections. And that is the basis, that's the beginning of where we must start our negotiations. How much the fact that every party cannot lead this? To have negotiations ah. when there's no, there's no dispute in, in anything. In because because, because my, my understanding of the country, we're having dialogue to, to solve the dispute, a certain dispute. So when you're seeing that agree uh, of legitimacy, then what is the negotiation for? It, we and also, are is not, it also fair for We are not going like to have negotiations to determine the outcome of the election. We are not going to have negotiations to determine who is legitimate and who is not legitimate. The issue of legitimacy has been solved by the people through the ballot. The issue of who is the president of the, of the Republic of Zimbabwe is well known. It's, there's no dispute. That is well acknowledged, even by the church leaders, so even is by the Honorable. These negotiations have been called by the opposition. The opposition has been saying they want to reach out to the president to say out their grievances to set out what they, what, what they would want to see as a vision for Zimbabwe in the new dispensation. And this is what the president said, come together, let's talk, let's realize, what, let's also uh, obtain what you, you, you think is the right thing to do in, in the present moment to revive the economy, to ensure that Zimbabwe can come
based on, on economic revival trajectory. So this is the basis of our negotiation. This is the basis of our dialogue. We could get where the president was because uh, MDC president Nelson Chamisa is saying that they are playing uh, cat and mouse. How can the president come when Chamisa also didn't come to the state house for the brainstorming of the negotiations? We cannot, we cannot always be the ones to to come to table when, when others are not coming to table. So this was, but this, this was, was not a Shamisa event. We cannot this always was come to uh, negotiation table uh, at the terms and the dictates of other people. We have set out the platform for negotiation. Okay. We have called all political parties to come to State House, and this is the State House. It, it belongs to the government. So, did you so everyone when, was when, supposed when to come. Able, so did you we come? have come to represent the president. We have come to represent government. But you, saying, oh, when when you, president, you, you said come. no political party is bigger than any political party. Yes. So who is supposed to summon people to come for the dialogue? The issue of dialogue, we said yesterday, we wanted to have people to come together, all the people who contested who, who to brainstorm to suggest who can be the convener of the negotiations, who can be the convener of our dialogue. Now the MDC and other political parties have been coming with so many preconditions for dialogue. And that is a sign that they are not willing to, they are not negotiating in, bed, in good faith. They are actually doing everything my, in bad faith. My last so, question, so, Honorable. Is that dialogue uh, my last question, will not be successful. You, you made some other political parties yesterday. What's the, the position? The, all the other political parties are amenable to, to the agree. views of the government. That we need to make sure that our country is united. We need to make sure that our journalists can portray the correct image for our country. We need to ensure that we get informed of what is happening across the country so that we can help each other with the ideas okay. to ensure so that we case, are a country that can reclaim its position in the world uh, uh, community of nations. In case MDC Alliance maintains its stance, then it doesn't come for the dialogue. Will you can with the dialogue? We don't need that dialogue. We don't need we have not called that dialogue in the first place. The people Oh, the opposition, so MDC, the opposition has MDC has, is the one that has been petitioning the president to call all political parties to call itself for dialogue. And this is the call that the president has now replied. This is the call that the president has said, now come, let's negotiate as you have requested. Now, if the president then responds to your call and you absent yourself from the negotiations, what do you want him to do? So Minister, can, can, I seek clarity? can I just seek clarity, Minister? You said that uh, Chamisa has petitioned. The president, have you seen those petitions? Those are things that are, are vast in the, that, that are watched in the media. Those are things that have been uh, said several times by the opposition MPs, by himself, and uh, all the other interested groups like civil organizations. They've been saying the president needs to convene a national dialogue. The president needs to uh, make sure that we have a gathering where we discuss our nation, where we discuss where we are coming from and where we are going. And this is a, a noble thing that the president has done. He has accepted that. But now, if we have political parties coming with preconditions, a list of preconditions, a long list of preconditions, that all those people who are in prison must be released, uh, then they should be disregard of the of the due process of the law, or what the courts have done in arresting looters, in uh, ensuring that those people who have been causing mayhem in our communities are released from the from the, from the court, from the jails where they have been uh, put. That is very unacceptable, and we cannot so, compromise the rule of law. Do you agree, that, 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 do you agree that we have a stalemate between uh, Chamisa and Nangagwa that needs to be settled, and these people who, at a certain point need to sit? Are they going there to is sit? no stalemate between President Nangagwa and Chamisa. Chamisa is the leader of his opposition party, and President Nangagwa is the president of the Republic of Zimbabwe. And the Republic is burning, mm. uh, and we've got a problem. These are the economic issues. Are these the are economic mm. issues that we are going to address in due course. We have launched the transitional stabilization program that is uh, supposed to revive the economy, and this is a process, not an event. Do you, so, admit, do you, do you admit that ZANU-PF has also preconditions for the jobs? ZANU-PF does not have it any... Says, it, it says it is not going to... Uh, uh, oh, the only, the, that is not a precondition of ZANU-PF. ZANU-PF or the President of, of the Republic of Zimbabwe has said there is no negotiation, there is no meaningful negotiation unless and is until opposition end? parties agree that he was legitimately elected and he was legitimately declared the winner of the, of the election, 
and he's the legitimate president of Zimbabwe. So Minister, you, Minister, you said so you don't want to talk with preconditions, but what you are simply stating right now that's is not a precondition. That's a fact of the constitution. That has been uh, ratified by the constitution. That has been resolved by the constitution. Minister, so been resolved by the people. So, do we foresee President Munangagwa meeting um, the opposition leader, uh, Mr. Nelson Chamisa, in the future? As long as they are prepared to meet him, as long as they are prepared to acknowledge he is he's the president, he's the legitimate president. When, when at a president, neutral when, venue when and president convened by a neutral um, convener who is not. No, that's, that, that's an issue that can be discussed. When president that's Mugabe an issue that talks, can be discussed. <laughs> 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 <laughs>